Welcome to the Galloway Show, Mom and Pop Television. Just me and my wife, Gayatri. One camera, one microphone, no frills. But last week reaching 613,004 people precisely. At least an hour ago, maybe it's climbed since then. Proving that there is a big market globally in the Anglosphere, at least amongst English-speaking people, at least, although many others also watch our output, that there's a big market for a midweek show like this, and preferably one with a budget rather than no budget. I have dragged myself away from Liverpool's humiliation at the hands of Napoli this evening, as I earlier watched Rangers be humiliated by Ajax, as last night I watched my own team, Celtic, be humiliated by Real Madrid. A wake-up call for Britain. And the release of President Putin's new album, Frozen, Let It Go, Let It Go, Let It Go, is another wake-up call, if we were waiting for one, that is. We probably are not, given the new cabinet that has just been sworn in and to which I shall turn in just a moment. But uh, all joking aside, we are facing climate catastrophe. Not the one predicted by Greta Thunberg, the one precipitated by the actions of our own government. Joining the war between the NATO forces situated in Ukraine and the Russian Federation by all means necessary, short of actual fighting, although we have plenty of mercenaries and no doubt some special forces either behind the lines, sometimes even in the front line. We have joined that war, we have launched economic war against Russia, and we are the losers. There's no one, no sentient being at least, who any longer can pretend otherwise. We lifted the huge stone and we dropped it on our own feet. And the pain will go on and will become more and more severe as we move into what we must pray will not be a long, cold, bitter winter. But it's only September and the chips are beginning to fall, as might be the European governments. The United States is ready to fight to the last drop of Ukrainian blood. That much has been clear for more than six months now. But they are also ready to fight to the last European, to the last European economy, to the last European government, to the last European warm home, to the last European factory that's functioning, to the last European with a job. That much is increasingly obvious and all for a war that never had to be fought and again any sentient being knows has already been lost on the battlefield and the longer it goes on the more people will die the more territory of the ukrainian state will be lost and the more trouble we will be in it's hard to overstate exactly the shape we are in by April, 50% or ha half of all of the income of an old age pensioner in Britain will be spent on electricity and gas, leaving just half for everything else. By April next year, three quarters of the income of the poorest families in Britain, millions upon millions of them, will be being spent on electricity and gas. These bills will become unpayable. I don't mean that they'll cause pain. I don't mean that they'll be difficult to pay. They will be unpayable. And people will not pay them. And the electricity companies will begin cutting off the gas and electricity of some of the poorest people in the land, including the poorest pensioners in the land. Then the politicians will have to explain to public opinion why they are allowing this to happen. Now, the unemployment that will come with these vastly increased energy bills, and they are already double what they were last year, 
bills that were hundreds are now thousands, bills that were thousands are now tens of thousands, bills that were tens of thousands are now hundreds of thousands. And it's only September. And of course, the people working in the places that can no longer be heated or lit will be laid off and millions will be unemployed. And that's just in Britain with a 3% exposure to Russian oil and gas. The European Union has a 50% exposure to Russian oil and gas and Germany has a 70% exposure to Russian oil and gas. So if you're looking at the dominoes that will fall, the Italian government has already fallen, the Bulgarian government has already fallen, the Czech government may very well fall on the 25th of September. Certainly that was the demand of 100,000 protesters in Wenceslas Square last weekend, and they'll be back again this weekend. The demonstrations pouring onto the streets of every region in Germany spell big trouble for little soldier Schultz, the minority chancellor of the German Republic. Who knows, East Germany might rebuild the wall and decide to link up again with Russia if it goes on at this rate. In tourist, the Russian Tourist Bureau has just issued a rather natty meme offering hot water shower tours of Russia. That's right, Russian power, energy, oil and gas is 40 times cheaper than it is in Germany today, 40 times cheaper. You can be warm in Russia, but you'll be freezing cold and possibly unemployed if you are in Germany. And the German economy, when it sneezes, causes influenza throughout the rest of the European Union, such is the central importance of the German economy to the health of the European Union. The euro has crashed below the dollar. The pound is at its lowest level compared to the dollar for more than 40 years. Both the pound and the euro have crashed below the dollar as a matter of deliberate policy by the United States government which is pumping up the value of the dollar entirely fictitiously, a giant Ponzi scheme with no economic fundamentals uh, beneath it at all. That too is a Ponzi scheme that will have to come to an end, but not till the European economies are crashed and trashed. Never mind, a new British government has arrived on the scene. And if gonads were what it was all about, and melanin was what it was all, ad all about, we'd all be able to get right behind this new British cabinet. Because there's hardly a white male to be seen in the upper echelons of the Conservative government. We've got a woman Prime Minister, the third Conservative woman Prime Minister. We've got a black Chancellor of the Exchequer whose name we shall all have quickly to learn how to pronounce. We've got our first ever black foreign secretary, the only foreign secretary since Robin Cook that I know well personally and quite like him, to be honest. James Cleverly is his name, although he's not that clever, if he'll forgive me saying so. But at least he's not Liz Truss, the outgoing foreign secretary, although she will be his boss. I hope he knows the difference between the Black Sea and the Baltic. If he doesn't, James, you've got my telephone number. We've got a Black Home Secretary. Well, we already had a Black Home Secretary in Priti Patel. Now we've got another one in Suella Braverman. Whether she'll do any better than Priti Patel did is definitely open to question. And Nadine Doris, the stupidest member of the cabinet, has had to exit because the prime minister must have that title for herself. My point is that gonads don't matter, having them or not having them. Melanin doesn't matter. Having an excess of it or having a deficiency of it 
doesn't matter. What matters is the politics of the person, not their gender, their sexual orientation, their color, how they pray, which direction in which they pray. All of these are personal matters that have nothing whatsoever to do with the efficacy of the policies that they are going to pursue. Ask the American people who had eight years of Barack Obama, super smooth, could sing a mean Sam Cooke, change is going to come. Well, it came all right, but it was change in the wrong direction, going backwards. Barack Obama launched more wars, bombed more countries, deported more immigrants from the United States than any president in American history. Eight countries he was at war with. He actually said himself, I'm rather good at killing. He said it himself, and it was one of the few things he said that was true. So Barack Obama did nothing for black people, nothing for the people of America, and I don't believe that Liz Truss will do anything for women, that uh, Kwasi Kwarteng, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, you thought I couldn't say it, didn't you? The new Chancellor of the Exchequer will do anything for black people or anything for the people of Britain. Our tragedy is that the leader of the opposition is even worse than they are. Why do I say worse? Because none of the government members in the cabinet are pretending other than that they are a government of rich people for rich people. The opposition, on the other hand, are jackals in sheep's clothing. They're definitely not wolves. The noble wolf does not deserve to be compared with them. They are jackals in sheep's clothing, pretending to be different from the conservatives. Well, actually, they are different in some ways. Liz Truss has let it be known to the media that she's going to spend 130 million pounds to dig us out of the winter fuel crisis scandal that we are now in. In a Dutch auction, the leader of the Labour Party offered to spend 29 billion pounds. Yes, that's right. Six times less than the Conservative Prime Minister is offering to spend. Now, if that money materializes, and it's still a big if, it's quite clear, given that Liz Truss has set her face against the public ownership and control of the rapacious, rapine energy companies that are destroying our families, threatening to destroy our economy with their super profiteering and their tripling, quadrupling levels of profits, she has set her face against bringing these companies, which only 30 years ago did not exist. Gas and electricity, water, railways, post, were all owned by the state in Britain 30 years ago. In 30 years, they've made money and they have reaped a tremendous harvest from public assets that we all paid for over half a century of public investment. So what does that mean? If she's going to spend 130 billion, is she going to give it to people? Far the best and most effective way, or is she going to give it to the energy companies as a reward for not raising their electricity prices by too much, even though they've doubled. We're supposed to be grateful that they might only just double and that the energy companies will be lavishly rewarded in the way that the procurement of the COVID response operated. 39 billion pounds. I repeat what I said to you last week. A million seconds is 12 days. A billion seconds is 32 years. 39.6 billion pounds were spent on track and trace of which there is no track or trace. 
Where did the money go? Boris Johnson, Matt Hancock, and all the others should be on trial for malfeasance, for misconduct in public office, for grand larceny of the British public purse, but they are not and in the foreseeable future will not be. That's the kind of use to which Liz Truss will put whatever part of that 130 billion pounds that are put up. That's the kind of expenditure it will be. It will be opaque. It will not be accountable to anybody. Much of it will be going to donors of the Conservative Party, to former fellow members of the common rooms of Oxford and Cambridge University, to fellow members of the British elite. And the politicians who hand it out will be richly rewarded when they go through the revolving door out of government and into industry and commerce. That's how the system works. Democracy, yeah? It's so overrated. No matter how many times they tell you that this is a democratic country, it is not. Liz Truss is the Prime Minister of Britain because 80,000 people, almost all of them men, almost all of them over 65 years old, almost all of them white people, golf and gin, and jag bigots and boars, 80,000 of them, picked the least worst of the two candidates, and she couldn't have had an easier candidate to defeat. Rishi Sunak sealed his fate when he forgot the old saw that he who wields the dagger never wears the crown. By stabbing Boris Johnson in the back, he forfeited immediately the support of all loyal Conservative Party members and all supporters of Boris Johnson. And yet, Liz Truss, the stupidest Prime Minister we have ever had, and boy, we've had some fools, beaten by 80,000 votes to 60,000, 57% to 43%. Now, I know the Conservative Party very well. I sat opposite them in the House of Commons for almost 30 years. I have known them up close and personal in more than 50 years in politics. They think Britain should be ruling India, not that an Indian should be ruling Britain. The chances of them voting for Rishi Sunak were apparently close to zero, but he still got within 20,000 votes of Liz Truss, who will quickly apparently be seen as incompetent, as uncharismatic, as lackluster and undistinguished and stupid as any prime minister we have ever had. And I have known a lot of them. I was born when Winston Churchill was the prime minister of Britain. I was too young to know him or Anthony Eden for that matter, or really Harold Macmillan, although I came to know him in later years. But I did know Alec Douglas Hume, who makes Liz Truss look like Aristotle. But Liz Truss will be rather like John Major. She will completely fail to rescue the Conservative Party's fortunes. Mark my words. She will completely fail because the Conservatives have no answers. And that means that the next general election, when it is fought, will likely yield a hung parliament with a minority Labour government propped up by separatist nationalist votes or not votes in matters of confidence by the SNP at Westminster. That means Britain will be essentially un government. In the teeth of the worst political, military and economic crisis that our country has faced since Napoleonic times, we will effectively have 
no government. Democracy, huh? It's so overrated. It is. No matter how many times they tell you this is a free country, it isn't true. 90%, 90% of my Twitter reach is now forbidden by shadow banning and algorithmic suppression of reading a word I say. This is on YouTube only because anybody that wanted to watch me on Facebook will not be able to because although the right honorable gentleman Nick Clegg doesn't have the guts to kick me off Facebook, he pretends that my videos aren't working, that somehow the tape broke or some other demeaning, degrading device to deny the three quarters of a million followers I have on Facebook access to my words and my thinking. TikTok is the worst of all. I've got a video up now pinned of me defending China against the United States provocations in Taiwan. When I looked an hour ago, it had 83 views. 83 views it had. Because, of course, TikTok has decided, being a Chinese company, to be more Catholic than the Pope, to be more royal than the Queen, and that therefore someone like me, even when I'm defending China, has to be suppressed. As a matter of fact, my friend Yaz just sent me a message seconds before I came on air to point out that an interview I gave to Global Times, which has a circulation only of 60 or 70 million people, a video and a written contribution, which is published in the Global Times today and was sent by them out on Twitter, achieved me the most coveted award, the double whammy. It brands me as Russian state-affiliated media and brands Global Times as Chinese state-affiliated media. So for the first time, a piece of my output has two health warnings on it. Now, Global Times may or may not, I had no idea, be owned by the Chinese state. But I ain't owned by the Russian state, who have never, ever attempted to tell me what to think or what to say or what not to say. They wouldn't dare. They're not like that. They actually believe to a greater extent in freedom of speech than the United Kingdom does. It's fact. Ask Julian Assange, who's getting ready, if he's lucky, to shiver through another winter in Belmarsh Prison. If he's unlucky, he'll be in a supermax penitentiary in Boulder, Colorado, and you will never see his face again or ever hear a word from him again. The truth is, this is not a free country. Neither is it a democracy. It's all lipstick on a pig. There's only one way that we can solve this crisis that we are in, in the short term. In the long term, we need a profound revolutionary change in the way our state is organized. I don't mean by that, that what passes for leftism today will come to rule. I mean something quite different. It is my patriotic, democratic and journalistic duty to bring you the other side of the story. And I intend to do it, whatever they do to me, however they try to suppress me. If I've got to go and do it from Moscow or Hong Kong or Belarus or Kyrgyzstan or Armenia or Serbia, I'll do it from there. It's my duty to explain to you 
what Britain needs to do to be great again. And I'm determined to do that. But in the short term, how are we going to get through this winter? There are three things I have to say to you in finality before taking your contributions and questions. We have to, number one, stop the arms trafficking to Ukraine. Most of the arms we're trafficking to Ukraine are being destroyed by Russian bombardment. Others are being sold on the dark web to terrorists and organized criminals. You thought Kosovans were the biggest source of drugs and prostitution and illegal weapons in Western Europe. So they were another NATO success story. But they will quickly be overtaken when the war is over in Ukraine by the Ukrainian criminal class. The fascists who will run away and seed themselves throughout Europe and seek to wreak their revenge on European countries that they think did not support them sufficiently to allow them to prevail in this war, the stab in the back theory that the Hitlerites have always, always engendered and fed from. The arms that we're sending there are useless, ineffectual. Read the testimony on ASP military on Telegram, by far the best source of information about the war, and you'll see them on their own videos talking about the ineffectuality of the military support that they have received. That's minus that which has gone out the back door and is now in a boot of a terrorist or a bank robber near you. We have to stop this trafficking because it's only keeping the war going. Number two, we have to lift all sanctions on Russia. Otherwise, it's just a giant rock that we've struggled to lift only to drop it on our own feet. Every one of us knows that the ruble is the best performing currency in the world today. That our currency is crashing. That the euro is crashing. And that our economies stand on the edge of a cliff on one leg, ready to fall and be dashed on the rocks below. And thirdly, we've got to allow encourage, but above all, allow a negotiated settlement to the end of this war. Otherwise, we'll be left with another Kosovo, a rump Western Ukrainian state just like Kosovo, which exists only on the subvention of the European Union and NATO, which can survive only by the presence of NATO and by the endless subsidy of the European Union, adding still more straw to the camel's back, which is the European economic situation. Otherwise, Russia will leave that rump state entirely landlocked, with no idea and no way of reaching at the Black Sea. Not the Baltic, James Cleverly the Black Sea. The whole coast will be taken. They'll probably link up with Transnistria, which has broken away from Moldova, which broke away from Romania, adding to the balkanization, adding to the jigsaw puzzle of the 21st century Eastern Central Europe. Otherwise, Poland may begin to encroach upon that rump state of Western Ukraine and take back from its point of view those territories it believes were taken from it and given to Ukraine by the Soviet Union at the end of the Second World War. The three demands are the absolute minimum to get us through this potentially bitter and catastrophic winter. I'm going to stop my initial monologue there, and just remind you that you can support the relaunch 
of the midweek mother of all talk shows on the 12th of October by giving now via Super Chat here on YouTube. It's very easy to do. You can give one pound. Every one of you watching can give one pound. I'm absolutely sure about that. You can give one dollar. You can give one euro, but you have to give something if you want to see a midweek mother of all talk shows come back on the air on the 12th of October. And not just come back, because come back it will. But we don't want it to go up like a rocket and come down like a burnt stick. We want it to go up and into orbit and provide an alternative point of view to people around the world who want to hear an alternative point of view. I was reading just the other day, John Stuart Mill. I don't do it often, but I was reading again his four principles of the importance of freedom of speech. The first of which was this. The other point of view must be heard because it may be true or may in part be true. And by refusing to or forbidding people to hear the other point of view, we may be harming not them, but harming ourselves. That's what our governments and their big tech satrapies have been doing throughout the course of this war and for much longer than that. It's not that everything I say may turn out to be true. It's virtually certain that a part of everything that I am saying will turn out to be true. It's therefore in your interest to hear it. You're not harming me by closing me down. You're harming yourselves. Now get donating, please. Even if it's a single pound, a single euro, or a single dollar, you can do it at the click of a button. Or on an ongoing basis, you can go to moats.tv website and you can give there, hopefully, a recurring amount for the fighting fund for the midweek moats. Let me take some uh, contributions. Uh, Kelly Lynch sends $5. Thank you, Kelly. Gets us off to a great start. It's $5, not the one I asked for. Thank you. Akram Nasser backed, gives three pounds. Thank you, Akram. And everyone can do that. Everyone watching in Britain, the United States, and around the world can do that. A small donation. Jay Thomas gives a far from small. $19.99. Thank you, Jay Thomas, a lady, I think. Thank you, madam. Uh, Tanya Keane says, why is the UK media blocking marches in the EU from being viewed? <laughs> well, the scorpion stings because it's a scorpion. The UK media cannot showcase the rising tide that is taking place everywhere in Europe. In Britain also, though with no leadership in Britain, to give it form and substance. So they can't show it because it strikes at the heart of their fantasy that the British people are prepared to freeze and starve and become unemployed for Zelensky and his wife to pile up billions of dollars in offshore accounts in the Virgin Islands or elsewhere. Forgive me, I've got hiccups. Uh, Arlen Everest gives $10. Thank you, Arlen, a regular donor uh, to the show. Much obliged to you. Victor Jovanovic gives Canadian dollars. 10 thanks. That's our first Canadian uh, donation of the evening. Greetings from Canada. Have you ever heard about organ harvesting in the war zones of Kosovo, Syria, and Ukraine? Well, I can't vouch for it, Victor, but of course, I've heard many horror stories about that. But as you're in Canada, why don't you ask your prime minister why his secret service smuggled Shamima Begum to ISIS in Syria? 
Not only was the Canadian Secret Service ferrying terrorists into Syria, it now turns out that they admitted to Scotland Yard in 2015 that they were smuggling schoolgirls to sleep with them just before they went into battle. Just think about that. Liberal, isn't it? Prime Minister Trudeau, achingly liberal. Let's see. TC gives five American dollars. Thank you, TC. I'm TC. And you're TC. Top cap, that is. The indispensable, indefatigable leaders of the gang. Uh, Socialist Carpenter gives five American dollars. Thank you for that. Jesus was a carpenter, of course. Michael Kelleher says, Superb show as always, George. Good evening. The voice for the voiceless. What is your opinion on the passing of Mikhail Gorbachev last week? Has policies Yeltsin destroying, his policies Yeltsin destroying the Soviet Union? Well, my religion precludes me from speaking ill of the recently dead, which is why I didn't speak about Gorbachev in the days after his death. Uh, but I believe that he was a fool and was a knave. I believe that Gorbachev destroyed the Soviet Union when he did not have to. He destroyed the Soviet Union when the majority of the people of the Soviet Un Union did not want him to. I consider the collapse of the Soviet Union the greatest geopolitical disaster of my lifetime. Not because everything was rosy there. If it had been, uh, the workers in all countries in the Soviet Union would have uh, come to the front to defend it. So I'm not pretending that everything in the Soviet Union was a success. But the breakup of the Soviet Union led to the greatest fall in life expectancy ever experienced since the Black Death, the plague in medieval uh, European countries. It led to the greatest fall in living standards in all of human history. It led to the re-emergence of the serpents of separatism and nationalism in the constituent parts uh, of the former Soviet Union. And I just put it this way, if Gorbachev had done what the Chinese leadership has done, he could have reformed the economy whilst keeping the political structures intact. And Russia and the Soviet Union, in particular, the outlying parts of the Soviet Union would have been as prosperous as China in all of its constituent parts is today. There you go. Frankie says, I've mentioned many times about Guido Harding and the 37 billion of taxpayers' money, and that was only the beginning of how our money was shared out between Boris Johnson and the rest of his crooks. Well said, Frankie. Couldn't put it better. Myself, shan't try to. Uh, and uh, next up is Laura Lamour. What a wonderful name. Is that your stage name, Laura? Or is that your real name? It's wonderful in either case. Jean-Luc Mélenchon is organizing a protest march in October against the cost of living and to get taxes off the big energy firms here in France. And we have it better than the rest of Europe. You do have it better because Mélenchon is afraid of his people. Uh, sorry, uh, Macron is afraid of his people and they have a leader like Mélenchon waiting in the wings. Britain and the British government are not yet afraid of their people. And we don't have a leader like Mélenchon waiting in the wings. But I'm afraid taxes on the energy firms, whilst welcome, are not sufficient. Necessary, but not sufficient. We must take these companies into public ownership and control. And we are in the situation in Britain where some of our energy companies are actually state-owned companies in foreign countries, principally in France. What that one out?
Let's see what else we've got. Flat Earth Reload gives two pounds. Thank you very much. Uh, do you believe we went to the moon? Yes, I do. And I'm wondering why NASA, which could have sent uh, men to Mars long ago, hasn't done so. There might be a conspiracy there, Flat Alpha. Uh, the Crusader of Christ gives four pounds 49. What can I say? Crusader of Christ, God bless you. Uh, Adri Stalman gives nine euros 99. Thank you very much indeed. Says, keep up the good work. I shall, as long as God gives me breath. And after me, I have six children. You're not going to see the end of the Galloways anytime soon. Uh, my Egg gives £10. Thank you very much, My Egg. Great stuff, George, says Ma. Uh, wonderful. I wonder if that was my Ma. Monkey Boy says, George, you think a general strike would cause a general election? Uh, undoubtedly, uh, it would help, but we're as far away from achieving a general strike as we are from Mars. Uh, right at this minute. Some unions are led uh, by outstanding leaders like the RMT, uh, like Unite, my own union that I joined on Christmas Eve of 1973. Just imagine that. I must be one of the longest serving members of the union, in fact. And I'm speaking at the Trade Union Congress next Monday at 7 p.m. You don't have to be a delegate uh, to come to the meeting, uh, you just need to register that you are coming. So if you're in the Brighton area and or you are a delegate or a visitor to the TUC, please come along to my meeting. So only a couple of unions are led by union leaders worthy of their salt. Uh, and most people are not in unions. 13 million people were in unions when I began as an activist in the labor movement. It's around half of that now and falling. So we need people to join unions and we need unions to be properly led before we can think of general strikes. Uh, so Giles McComish sends five pounds. Thank you very much. Says, see you in Stockport. This is an amazing thing. It's two months until I'm in Stockport with the mother of all roadshows, uh, where we'll be filming four moats. Gayatri will be doing the filming. Uh, and the audience will be interviewed, Vox Pops and so on. But here's the amazing thing. It's two months away, and we've already sold 100 seats in a 151-seat theatre. So if you're thinking of coming, better get the tickets pretty damn quick because we're definitely going to sell out. And who knows, we may well even sell out in September rather than November. Uh, my Che Jeffrey gives two US dollars and says, long live the mother of all talk shows. God willing, thank you for that. Matt gives 10 euros. Thanks, Matt. The German Green Economy Minister, Habeck, said on TV, because of the price increase, he does not see an insolvency wave. The baker would stop selling, cancels the business, and he reopens later. Great. Ah. And that's the economy, Minister? Ah. How funny is that? Laura Lamour says, why aren't the British out rioting in the streets? Because we are British. Now, uh, Uzi 1MM says, to be fair, new, new labor, we're talking about taxing the energy companies. Truss's plan is to simply take our money and hand it straight to them. Truss is even worse, and I don't say that lightly. <laughs> well, up to a point, uh, labor was seeking to raise 29 billion by that device, Uzi. Liz Truss is going to put 130 billion pounds into the economy by her device. Which is better, which is worse, you decide. Neither are any good, so far as I'm concerned. Uh, Goose Creek says, shame I have to stay awake till 11 p.m. on a Wednesday evening, but the Galloway show is unmissable. 
so I accept it and wouldn't miss it. Thanks, Goose, but what kind of man is asleep at 11 p.m.? Or do you mean it starts at 11 p.m.? Yeah, that's right. You're probably in the Netherlands. My goodness, I thought the people in Amsterdam had a happening kind of life, Goose. You're tucked up in bed at 11 p.m. Thank God you stay up for the most midweek. Monkey Boy says, hi, Octane Truth from George tonight. Well, I... Tell it as I see it, monkey boy. As I say, I may be right, I may be wrong, but you can be 100% certain that what I'm saying to you is what I truly believe, that no one paid me to say it, no one can threaten me to stop saying it. I can do no other than to stand where I stand. Uh, we've got uh, 15 minutes left. Abdullah al Sabah says, after all the evil perpetuated by the British Empire with slavery and colonization, it looks like the chickens have finally come home to roost. Well, that's true, Abdullah, but it's my duty now in 2022 not, not to count the chickens coming home to roost. It's my job now to try to give leadership to the British people alive today, none of whom were involved in slavery or colonization. I don't dig this uh, constant fetishization of our past. My family went to work in their bare feet during slavery and colonization. My family lived in one room attics, having taken in a lodger as late as 1896. So I have no white privilege. I have no white guilt. If I'd been alive at the time, I'd have been amongst the ranks of those fighting against slavery and colonization. But one thing is certain. The poor and working masses of Britain today will not be allowed, at least by me, to go like chickens into the abattoir. I will seek to lead them and rally them. But I'm sure you meant well with your message. Uh, Bok Yanduma gives five euros as always. Thank you very much. I disagree, Gigi. The solution is to take up Putin's offer for a comprehensive shared security agreement. Yeah, we've, we've got to end the war. First, we want my full list of demands. They're in the Workers' Party. Ten demands that you can get from our website. I think point number one is that Britain should withdraw from NATO and any other military alliance. We should be, especially after Brexit, an independent global country, sailing, literally and metaphorically, around the world. Automatic enemy of none. Potential friend to all. A trading nation. Recovering our trading our mercantile, and our manufacturing greatness. That's what I stand for. So no disagreement between us. It's just about stages. Alan gives RS. Now, what is RS? R dollars? Russian dollars? Rubles? Five? I'm not allowed to accept rubles. But thanks, Alan, if that's what they are. What's your opinion about the TV show that raffles off the payment that's of really. the audience's Electricity bill. What was that, Gadget? Brazilian. Hmm? Brazilian. Brazilian. Thanks, Alan, Real. very much for that. Uh, I never saw anything quite like it. Talk about reducing the crisis afflicting and about to inflict absolute emisceration on millions, turning it into a sofa TV game show. Shame on ITV. Shame on that. Uh, Good morning show. Was it ITV or was it BBC? It was ITV. Mm -hmm. Lily Pop says only 4% of our gas came from Russia. Yet our energy bills will rise by 240%. Indeed, Lily, I made that point uh, earlier. What about Germany, which has 70% of its energy coming from Russia? Now, Putin said today at an important forum that... Uh, He's ready to open Nord Stream 2 and can solve this just like that. 
by flicking a switch. We could return to the status quo ante. In fact, better than the status quo ante because Nord Stream 2 never worked because Trump and Biden did everything they could, including creating a war to stop it. But it's there. It's been built. It could solve this problem in the flick of a switch. But we won't allow it or we won't be allowed to allow it. That's the truth of it. Uh, Walter Rodriguez gives Canadian dollar six ninety nine. Thank you, Walter. He says, thanks for spreading the truth. Uh, Walter, you're in Canada. I repeat, everyone in Canada should be asking why Trudeau was smuggling schoolgirls to sleep with Islamist head-chopping fanatics in Syria. It's a big question, that, you know, and not one easily answered. Har P gives 55, I think that's Serbian currency, in which case I'm particularly grateful. God bless and preserve Serbia, all of it. And uh, I hope uh, to see the Red Star uh, progress in the uh, Europa League uh, this year. And my own team, Manchester United, in San Sebastian tomorrow, of course. Uh, what else have I got? Uh, Frankie gives five pounds. Thanks, Frankie. Very kind of you, uh, indeed. Um, any more? The Crusader gives four pounds forty nine. Hi, George. First time in your show, and grateful for your powerful views on politics. Viva la revolución! Viva la gente de que viva la raza! You lost me at uh, la gente. But I'm certain people. that it was good. What? People. people. La gente is the people. Wow. My wife knows so many languages. That's so impressive. Marco Smith gives five US dollars. Cue up the Beatles, Dizzy Miss Lizzie. <laughs> Very good. I wish I'd thought of that. Uh, Miss Truss is the best I've come up with uh, so far. But Dizzy Miss Lizzie is a very good suggestion. Thank you for making it. Demon Zitration says, time to move to Rumble and Odyssey platforms. I think we're on uh, Rumble, aren't we, Gayatri? I think yes, Moats yeah. is on Rumble. Uh, yeah, of course, we are trying everything that we can to escape the uh, constant harassment and strangulation from big tech, except YouTube so far. I've got to be honest. Uh, YouTube has done me no harm, at least thus far. Uh, but follow me on Telegram, yeah? That will be the last trench. It's t.me forward slash George Galloway. Rachel Thompson says, where can we send a check? Uh, the Union Club, 49 Greek Street, Soho, London, W1. That will get to me. Thank you very much. And where else would I be but the Union Club? Thanks, Rachel. Most kind of you. And Centaurus says Ukraine have blown up the polling office meant for the 11th September referendum today. From October 1st, nobody can leave Ukraine. 15 years in prison if caught. As I've mentioned before, I did a lot of driving in Europe over the summer. And I've got to tell you something. I swear to you that this is true. The best cars I saw in Europe, it might just be bad luck or good luck. The best cars I saw in Europe this year had Ukrainian plates on them. The sons of the oligarchs, no doubt, who'd escaped that deadline that you have just described. Uh, what else is coming up? Still about six minutes. Susie Zatorsky says, George, I always hear you condone the liberal government in Canada. However, you do not condone the Conservative government, nor have you supported our new Democratic Party. Why? Susie, I presume you mean condemn and not condone. We're two countries divided by a common language. I condemn them all. I condemn Trudeau most for two reasons. First of all, because he is in power and secondly, because he claims to be a liberal. If he is what liberalism means, no wonder people hate liberalism 
all over the world in increasing numbers. And frankly, I don't think much of your so-called new, so-called Democratic Party either. Sorry, Susie. Uh, Rick Poe Sports says, God bless GG. From LBC to Radio 4 and the BBC, there comes anti-Russian Putin narratives. Are the likes of yourself, Jimmy Dore, Duran, and myself missing something? Were Putin's actions fundamentally bad? We're not missing anything, my friend. The others are lying in the service of a state narrative whilst accusing other people of being in the pay of other states. No state pays Jimmy Dore. No state pays me. Nobody pays me. The only state funding I get is my parliamentary pension from the House of Commons. Nobody pays me to say what I'm saying, think what I think. Nor Jimmy Dore either. We tell you what we believe to be the truth. BBC Radio 4 is a bought and paid for servant of the British state. How could it be otherwise? Without the British state, it doesn't exist. We'd have to actually compete in the marketplace of television companies of which there are now many hundreds and would swiftly sink without trace. Except the archers, maybe. And match of the day. I'm paying a TV license for match of the day. That's all I ever watch on the BBC. The last thing I'd ever watch there is news. Hope gives £10. Thank you. I'm sorry for being an American Brit living in Britain. I know I'm a sewer rat because my grandfather was in the US Army and I was wrong to be proud of him. On the contrary, Hope, you have every reason to be proud of him. Every reason to be proud of the American soldiers and Canadian soldiers that gave their lives on Juneau, on the beaches of Normandy. I myself have American blood in my veins. My great-grandmother being the only woman in the 19th century to emigrate from New York to Dundee. She may have gone the wrong boat, but that's what she did. We love Americans in this house. We just don't like the American state very much. Sarwat Raja says, will moats come to the south of England or London? Stockport, really far for me. Well, we'll definitely be coming to London and we're going to make every effort to come to the south coast also. There's a question on my Patreon page. Please follow me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash George Galloway. Evening, George. Did you see Declassified UK's article about sinister plans being drawn up with profound threats to our civil liberties? The government has set in motion four bills before Parliament to limit the role of the independent judiciary, increase secret courts, repeal the Human Rights Act, and restrict the freedom of the press. Well, the press has no freedom, wants no freedom, uh, and I haven't seen the declassified article, but I definitely will look. Uh, I think we are on a slope which leads only one way. It leads to the end of all illusions that Britain is a free country. Time for one or two more. Jerry Williams gives two pounds. Thanks for questioning the popular Ukraine view. Jerry, it used to be the popular Ukraine view. Take a look around. Take a look around in windows, on flagpoles. Take a look around on social media, on people's avatars, their twibbons, and so on. The Ukrainian colors have melted away like snow off a dike in the spring. Because people know they've been had. They've been mugged again. Ukraine was like the COVID ha-ha. It was like the monkeypox ha-ha. It's one damned thing after another with diminishing returns for those 
that line. Uh, 10 seconds. Adli Ayad gives two American dollars. Thank you, Adli, for that, for bringing this show uh, more or less to a close. Odiferous musky. What a wonderful name. I can smell it from here. George, we are ruled by the security state, a shadowy enemy that manipulates the public with misinformation. How can we fight it when they can twist every word and keep us divided? Well, I'm doing my best, Muskie. Uh, maybe at some risk to myself, when the Chinese Foreign Affairs Minister's spokesman name-checked me last week, I had a feeling of foreboding. Who knows who will appear through my window or on my way to the supermarket? I don't know what will happen to me. But the one thing you can be sure of, as long as God gives me breath, I'll keep talking my truth to you. And as far as I can, I will keep these shows going. Thanks for watching the Midweek Galloway Show. And remember to give for the return of Midweek Modes. I'll see you on Sunday at 7 p.m. UK time for the mother of all talk shows. Have a good night.